This weekend we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, you know how easy it is to find problems with somebody else. We hear something about another person, and it's so easy to condemn. So as we begin, let's reflect on the message of Jesus Christ. We know what it is, but it's sometimes it's very difficult to follow Christ. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us for the sin we have committed. Bring each one of us home to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, O oh Lord, may we eat, walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way in the wasteland, rivers, Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord, Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. We, we are, are filled, filled with, with joy. joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great things, things for us. We, we are, are filled, filled with joy. joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The, the Lord, Lord has, has done, done great, great things for us. We, we are filled, filled with, with joy. joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. We, we are filled, filled with joy. joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. 
And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? No one has condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone. So today's Gospel story, I think we're all familiar with the story. There's two things I'd like to talk about today. The first one being, you know, how they tried to set Jesus up, and he gave that perfect answer. You know, they said Moses wanted this woman stoned because she was caught in the very act of adultery. And the Romans, who didn't allow the Jews to put anyone to death, would have said no and not care that they, about it. So they wanted to test Jesus to have him pick yes or no. But Jesus comes up with that perfect answer that let the one among you that has no sin be the first to throw a stone. So I think that gives us a little bit of a lesson that when we're asked those questions, maybe when we're challenged by people, we take that second to think about it and think about maybe what Jesus would say to give our answer, to give our reply. The second thing that I'd like you to talk to about really is the most important thing. I think it's really that judgment of the woman. The scribes, the Pharisees, all the people there when Jesus was teaching, they all really judged that woman right away. They wanted to stone her. They wanted to put her to death. But Jesus said, hey, hold on a minute. You know, you're all sinners too. Let's let have the first person who has no sin throw a stone. And Jesus forgave her and told her to go on and sin no more. So that reminded me of a story that I'd like to share and uh, illustrate this point about judgment. You know, there was a father who had four sons, and they were bickering and gossiping and fighting with each other. And he said to them, he wanted to teach them a lesson. There was this pear tree some distance off, and he wanted all the sons to visit the tree within the next year. And he sent them out at a certain time to visit the tree. The oldest, he started out, and he wanted them to visit in the wintertime. The second son, in the springtime. The third son, in the summertime. And finally, the youngest, in the fall. So they all went to see in their appointed time, and they came back, and the father got them all together once they all had visited the tree and said, all right, tell me what you saw. The oldest son said, I saw a terrible tree, bent, crooked, ugly looking, you know, bleak. Okay, the second son said, you know, I saw a tree that was kind of green, it was budding a little bit, it had a lot of promise. The third son said, you know, I saw the most beautiful tree there, it had blossoms on it, it was growing, it was vibrant. The last son, the youngest, said, I saw a tree that was ready for picking. The fruit was heavy, drooping down. And they were all kind of bickering with each other about what they saw and who was right and who was wrong. And the father said to them, he said, you're all correct. You all saw the tree in a different season, at a different time, in a different place. And you cannot judge based on that one instance. And you know, I thought about that, and you know, that really applies to the gospel. It applies to Lent. And I thought about it, and Matthew Kelly, the Catholic author, I always told an illustration about judging things about, and he talked about a movie. You know, a movie's made up of individual frames, how many frames per second. You know, back in the old day, you could see it on a film. But if you took one instance, one frame of that entire movie that may be hours long and looked at it, you can't judge how good the movie is or how bad the movie is or maybe even what you're seeing based on that one particular instant in time. So, I, you know, that reminded me, you know, my wife, she always wants to watch, you know, Disney movies that the kids like. She came back and said she wanted to watch the movie Encanto. And I said, all right, I finally gave in. We started to watch it. We didn't really like it to begin with. So we said, all right, we're going to not watch the rest of it. We only maybe watched a half an hour of it or so. So finally, a couple days later, the next weekend came. She said, you know, I really want to watch it. Our granddaughter loves it. She's probably watched it a dozen times. So we want to watch it. We want to check it out. You know, it's supposed to have all these lessons. So finally, well, and I agreed again. We watched it part of the way through. And I think we both fell asleep at this time, you know, watching the movie. Finally, you know, we fell asleep. We didn't watch it. She wants to watch the end of it again. So we went through the whole thing again. Finally, we got to the end. And I think it was a very good movie. It had a lot of lessons in it. And I think that's the thing. We can't judge things by partial partiality. And that's what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus, who's the judge who has no sin, said, let someone who has no sin cast the first stone. And it would be really Jesus. 
So if we look at things, we need to look in their entirety. We need to look at that movie in its entirety. You know, and the movie had a song in it, Don't Talk About Bruno, who was kind of a family member that had some issues. And I think that's another lesson of that movie and, and what we are talking about today, is really, don't talk about other people. Don't gossip about other people. Don't judge them based on maybe one instance in their life. I think we need to take heart in what Jesus tells us, forgive, forget, look at the whole picture. Look at everything. Jesus could have judged the woman right then and there, but he did not. He chose not to. It gives us a lot of hope, because we are all sinners, and if we have Jesus judging us, we look for that, no, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. So God bless and stay safe, my brothers and sisters. God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We offer these prayers. For our world, may world leaders come together and work for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people, may we refrain from judging the sins of others and work on our own repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, may it continue to grow in holiness so that we always love one another with charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, and the hopeless, may they be comforted by God's promise of mercy, triumph, and redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may God grant them salvation in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you to continue to bless our lives. May we truly be instruments of your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to give you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to give you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Friends, let us pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. Hear us, loving God, having instilled in your servants the teaching of our faith, graciously purify us by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, by your gracious gifts each year, we await the sacred Paschal mysteries with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity, participating in the mysteries by which we have been reborn, we may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop. We remember Tom and Marita Burke and Beth Burke Zeggy, Charles Ambromitis, the deceased members of the Holy Name Society, Matthew and Jean Wisniewski, and the deceased members of the Capizzi family, whom we have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed all those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessing truly guide us in all that we do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.